everybody, Mike here, Sebring, Lexus Racing. I got Bam behind the microphone and I got an album dropper and that's why I got a mic. So it's coming very soon. Anyway, here at lovely Lexus Racing Hospitality, Sebring. But I'm here to talk to you about the RX 500H S4 Performance. Um, I just put about 3,000 miles on the white one and about 1,000 miles almost on this wonderful uh, Copper Crest color. So I wanted to show you and talk to you about it a little bit. It is so loud here, not just the excitement of the race, but all these great manufacturers out here, obviously Lexus. We're talking about acceleration crafted right here and the SUVs, the NX, obviously the RX that I'm gonna talk about, but I have all the homies out here all these Lexus enthusiasts, ISF, RCF, GSF, IS500, IS350, um, Lexus really has done a great job taking a lot of the feedback we've said over the years that, hey, we would love something sportier in the SUV space. And that RX500 HS4 performance, to me, it really has moved into that uh, market. And you know, I'm not the biggest crossover guy, I've said it, but I actually don't mind driving this thing. I'm gonna put you in the car and we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. We're at Sebring. And right now we're in the normal RX road, right? This car has been out since uh, 1999 and uh, created the crossover segment, right? As I've talked about before in regards to a unibody, this is car based, whereas everything previously was uh, a truck based or body on frame, right? So this is in its element that the RX has always been in, which is a straight road, comfy, right? Cement, right? And, and it's excelled well. We're talking about a car that traditionally sells over 100,000 vehicles a year which up until recently was the top in its segment. So obviously very popular. Um, but as we all know, things change and taste change, demographics change, and you have to embrace change. And Lexus has done that by offering this vehicle. And as you all know, this is not my first time. Uh, you see me at the PR event in Cali in August, and that had the Michelin Pilot Sports. This particular vehicle does not. It has the Bridgestones, so it is not as aggressive as a rubber. It does ha affect the handling. Uh, because I did go on track with this as well yesterday. But I'm here to say that if you're looking for a sporty Lexus SUV, something in, in the segment, maybe you're like, oh, man, uh, I've outgrown my IS or I've outgrown my GS. I need something bigger. I'm traveling more. I need more space. Man, this vehicle really knocks it out of the park because, again, traditionally, I much prefer the LX. I love my body on frame, my big boxy vehicles. And I just drove this down from Atlanta, and it was absolutely Superb. I'm flooring it and look at the wheel lock. That is direct for y'all. It's absolutely unreal. Torque vectoring. You got four electric motors behind each wheel now instead of traditional oh, drive trend axle. And now this car just handles amazing. So when I was on track and uh, Brittany from MKTG was with me, I was explaining to her, like, look, I do have track experience, but even better than that, I'm not saying this car is a fail safe, but with that direct four technology, this RX handles absolutely unreal. And you can go into the corners with full confidence knowing that the system kind of has your back, is what I would say. I'm gonna floor it a little bit. Not exactly the most exotic sound. It is an inline four, turbo four, uh, coupled with a hybrid. So this is a hybrid powertrain, but it does have 366 peak horsepower and 409 peak pounds of torque, which is much faster than every RX in the history of RXs. And actually, it's pretty competitive in its segment. And you get about 25 miles per gallon because my foot is a little aggressive. I'm getting about 22. And I noticed when I let off, I'm getting about 28, almost 30 on the highway. So it all depends on how you drive. And speaking of that, can you show this, bam? I just realized I'm gonna press this. I'm not in sport mode. So that affects the suspension, throttle response. And this is a fully loaded model. So we even have rear steer on this car. So I'll go on to talk about it, and you all know I've driven every Lexus, pretty much, even the LFA, multiple times. And it occurred to me what vehicle this reminded me of, and it reminded me of Christine's OGS 350 F Sport. I feel like, I don't want to say this, this is a spiritual successor to it, as a GS that we all love is gone, but this is what it really reminds me of. I love getting in it and just having fun in this car, which is... What I used to love about the GS, the GS was very similar as and it had more than adequate power. They're both about zero to zero in about 5.5 seconds, 5.7 seconds, which is not overpowering. But now with Direct 4, it, it's super fun when I'm hitting or I'm into the corner 
And it reminds me of the GS, we had the optional rear steer on that vehicle car. So even though it was rear wheel drive, it handled absolutely fantastic. And if you remember, the reviews at the time did hail the GS as the best handling in class. I forgot to talk about that. Six piston brakes up front. Totally forgot. Look at those massive calipers. Six piston on a RX 500 F Sport Performance. So it brakes absolutely great. I've obviously experienced any fade in normal traffic and on the track. So again, zero to 16, about 5.5 seconds. Don't worry, y'all. I am actually on the speed limit. Um, and it's just no RX ever, at the light. ever the left handled to make a more accelerated like this. Drive. Which obviously for a person like me, it's way more up my alley than ever it's been in the past. And if you follow me in, in, on social, you know, we've owned every model. Of the, the, uh, the first gen, the second gen, we had a 400H. Uh, then we had uh, F Sport, the 2013 when it became F Sport, and uh, then we had the 2016 350 F Sport, and now this is the uh, F Sport Performance. Imagine, I'm still talking about how this car drives, not about the features, which I guess, bam, I could do right now. This thing is so new, I just realized the plastic is still on. Right? Can you get me pulling At the light, <laughs> use the left lane to make a U turn so at Sparta the Road. On. A full panoramic roof, let's see, can you get that, bam? Love the fact that instead of slapping one just LED TV, which is obviously fashionable. Everybody seems to be doing it. I do like the fact that Lexus has made, here's your screen here. You still have a traditional digital speedometer. And then obviously your AC vent over here. And I just like how, how everything falls. It actually looks like, you know, we actually kind of put some thought into it instead of just, here's a TV with all your digital instruments on it. Um, and this has cooled and heated front and rear seats. The rear seats are now power. And the rear seats are actually powered in the back, so this thing actually folds down as well. Um, USB sort C ports all abound. This has wireless charging. Um, and then these have the F Sport seats, and you see the F Sport trim with the stitching. And this, I forgot the exact name, I'm just sorry, but this, you see everything is in an L shape. These are the little details that make Alexis Alexis. Um, so it's very comfortable. I think for somebody that has had an RX before, you'll, you'll get to love this really easy. I think uh, the one thing I would say I think people are having a little bit of issues with is the, the haptic controls here. So they're on the HUD screen, which they haven't can't really show right now, which is fine. You can actually change the haptic controls to manage different things like the volume of the radio, uh, going into sport mode, um, your radar, cruise, etc. But instead of like all these physical buttons, it's all like kind of right here and you program what you think you'll use the most. Some people seem to like it. I don't think you'll be able to really get that on a test drive. So that is something I think I have confidence in the system. It's just familiarity. It's something that over time, after probably about a good month, you'll be like, wow, I wish all my cars had this. But I know if you do it like once, you're gonna be like, ah, I don't really like this. So as you can see, um, it's not an EV. This is a hybrid, which I think is still, uh, has oddly enough turned into a dirty word for a lot of people, but there's so many advantages to the system. Obviously you can use traditional uh, gas and then it does have hybrid power with the battery as well. Um, there is a 450H plus which actually is a plug-in so it has I think about 37, 38 miles per charge and it still has your gas engine and still a hybrid. I mean, it's absolutely uh, a great piece of technology. I think these vehicles, I don't think there's one way, one solution. I think Toyota has been pretty, pretty clear with that. They're saying hey there's different ways to look at you know carbon neutrality and just forcing everybody into an EV. And I think something like this, uh, this electrified uh, RX 500H, is uh, a great, great, fantastic option. Uh, I love the fact that a brand like Lexus offers different things like an LX, which is, you know, I have, is a twin turbo body on frame V6. Uh, they have something like this, the RX 500H uh, for performance, which is a hybrid. They have uh, an X450H Plus, which you saw at the track. RX as well for 50 inch plus. They have different options. And they have beautiful V8s like my LC500, the RCF, the track edition, the IS500. Yeah, that's what people want. I think deep down. They want to have choices and, and sometimes they're like, oh, maybe I'll take my EV to work, but on the weekends on my big poop. All right. So back here at the Lexus Hospitality Suite, Lexus Racing. Bam. Appreciate you, bro. Um, pulling back in with the RX 500 F Sport Performance. Again, absolutely fantastic vehicle. And this uh, Copper Crest color in particular is absolutely, absolutely stunning in person. 
Uh, it looks even better than photos. I think it's actually one of the few colors that looks great in photos and in person. We're back. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Bam. Peace out.